I was going to say, before you sit down, high five four people and tell them I like it right here. Come on, tell somebody. Good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is. Ring. It's any time. It's God's time. Amen. Well, it's an honor and privilege to be here again at Bethesda. I was thinking this is my second time, I believe, coming here. It feels like my 10th time because um, it was just like, you know, hashtag Insta family. You know what I'm saying? It was just like just jumped right in. Well, we've known each other for 30 years. Wow, 30 years, yeah, something like that. So it's been a long time. That was when we were like five, but um, <clears throat> I'm just kidding. Actually, I'll be 50 um, on April 7th, like this coming year. So my Jubilee year, entering into my Jubilee. And uh, for, that, for that, in fact, and my wife and I will be married 25 years within a couple weeks of that. And um, we're going to, we're taking a tour group to Israel um, in March. And if anyone wants to come, you're more than welcome to come. Uh, but uh, we're, we're going over there. We're calling it the 120th Jubilee Tour, the 120 Jubilees in history. And, uh, and so a prophetic journey through the Holy Land. My wife is uh, a Schindler, and uh, so her great uncle was Oscar Schindler from Schindler's List. And uh, so she has like this crazy favor over there. So we're working with uh, a family um, in, in the Knesset. Uh, for this tour and setting all that up. So super fun. Um, I've gone with her a few times. We've gone a few times throughout the years, and uh, it's always fun because she gets, like, this special treatment. And uh, so I'm just like, girl, I'm with you, you know. Uh, but uh, <laughs> send love from her. One day I'm going to get her here and our, our, our three kids and uh, our oldest daughter, Haley. She's married to a Texan, and uh, we live in Texas and Dallas, and uh, so... He got us there to move from Atlanta to, to Dallas this year, and so we are there, and uh, she's doing good. Uh, she's in, my daughter's in the music industry, um, and in fact, her label, it's amazing, her label uh, is doing a Christmas album, and she got to choose the song, because they're do different artists are doing songs uh, for Christmas, and uh, the song that she chose was Mary Did You Know? And so while I was staying at the house this week, we actually got to hear uh, the scratch track of it. I almost tempted to play it for you. Um, you'd have to turn off the streaming because if she found out, I'd be in trouble. But uh, <clears throat> maybe at the end, maybe at the end, if somebody wants to hang around. Uh, but um, bring greetings to her. And then my son as well, he's in the music industry. His name's Zach. He, he has my middle name, my name, and then my dad's name. So his name's Zachary Patrick David Kitely. And uh, so we just gave him all the generations. And... Uh, He's, he's in the music industry as well. He's 20. And uh, then our youngest, Hope, is, with, uh, is, is, is home. She's 13. And, in fact, I brought with me out there, if you w would like to see, she, I think we have a dark gray T-shirt and, a, like, a trucker hat. And it says Hope Brand. And so she started her clothing line. And uh, she's 13. She's like, Dad, I want to start a business. I'm like, all right, do it. And so her and her sister, they got together. And so stuff, they have stuff out there, um, if you would like to pick it up. Um, it's super fun. Support her in her, her new venture. Um, and uh, she's going to start doing like different verses like the God of all hope and different things. So um, this is the first one just releasing Hope Brand. And so her name is Hope. Uh, we adopted her when she was 10 months. And uh, that's my baby girl right there. So we, we named her Hope and um, Hope Jaslyn Kitely. Uh, Sometime I'll tell you, did I tell you that story? Uh, I told you all that story. We get, the Lord gave us her name 10 years before she was born. When our oldest daughter was born, uh, the name the Lord gave me during the whole time she was in the womb was Haley Jaslyn, Haley Jaslyn, J-A-Z-Z-L-Y-N-N. -N. And, uh, and, and when, when she was born, I saw her. She was born on 9999. And, uh, and, and I saw her. She was born at 8.05 in the morning. I told my wife, I'm like, come on. Can you just wait till like 9.09, 9, 9 o'clock something? <laughs> 8.05, but nonetheless, 9.999, and the moment I saw her, I said, her name's not Haley Jaslyn, it's Haley Joy, and, uh, and so we changed it to Joy, 
And then 10 years later when we were adopting, they said, we have a, a, a girl and she has a very unique name. And, uh, and, and so, and we were like, okay. And as we were actually walking into this appointment to find out about the adoption, the opportunity um, in, in California, um, my wife prayed in the, on the way in. She just said out loud, God, give us a sign. And you know, God will give you a sign. And so we walk in and the lady says, well, this is a very unique name. It's J-A-Z-Z-L-Y-N-N. The same exact spelling that we had for Haley Joy 10 years before. My wife starts crying, and, and they, was, they said, do you want to see the picture? She's like, I don't need to see anything. This is our baby. And uh, so, so hope is her brand, and uh, so she brought it here. In fact, I brought a couple other things as well. My grandmother, can I play that right now? Do they have a video ready? My grandmother, Dr. Violet Kitely, um, she was a woman preacher before women preachers were allowed to be women preachers. So she was baptized by Amy Simple McPherson in 1937 at age 12, and she started preaching from then on out. And uh, she preached up until 2015 when she just went to be with Jesus. And uh, so she wrote one book. I brought this last time, uh, but if you didn't get it, I brought more. I got a bunch, actually. Um, Relationship, the Key to Fulfillment in the Song of Solomon. And, uh, and so it's, it's, it's kind of like a commentary, verse-by-verse verse commentary um, that she wrote. And uh, she was a mighty prophetic voice. Um, and I just shared, <laughs> this is a screen grab, so the quality's not good, but the sound is of the video. Do you have that? Can we play that um, video? This is her prophesying in 1980, about 84, 85. Hold our applause, please. Hold the applause. For the wind of God at this very moment is blowing. Yea, it's blowing over the face of the earth. For the time has come, saith the Lord, when every nation shall be touched by the wind of God. Nations who say, I will not have the God of heaven to rule. The Spirit of the it's Lord a screen grab. is going to supersede all leadership of man it, and devils he shall cause the wind of God and thou hast received a tool from the living God and that tool is in thine hands and in thy feet and in thy mouth yea and I have given thee a tool of worship and by this tool it's become a weapon of warfare and you're going to believe God that when you press out your hands toward the nations yea the force of wickedness shall be pushed back and there shall be a mighty deliverance that shall go forth by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and it's going to touch the islands of the sea it's going to touch the continents of the earth it's going to break down the forces of wickedness and there shall be a great in gathering saith the Lord for the time of my harvest has come and I have given into your hands yea the very weapon and the very force of the Holy Ghost that is going to break the very powers of hell against individuals lives yea disease shall underneath your feet Amen. Communism underneath your feet. Amen. Every force of idolatry underneath your feet. For yea, the Spirit of God has given unto your feet to become a weapon of thy God. Yea, believe it. Step on the enemy. Step on the enemy. Step on the enemy. Step on the enemy. Amen. Amen. So <laughs> that that's my grandma. She didn't she didn't bake cookies. She burnt toast. She wrote over 70 Bible college courses throughout the years, started Bible colleges in the US, Canada, China, Japan, Philippines, Africa, all over the world. And uh, so she wrote one book, only one book, even though among she wrote many classes. Uh, so I have this here, and if you know me, you come, I'll be out there, and I'll, I look at you, I do the, the Dick Mills, I look at you and God gives me scripture verses for people, um, and so I'll sign that. As well, I have my father's book. He passed on October 29th last year, 
And uh, for the last six weeks of his life, he wrote this one book. It was just a real simple book. Um, he, he just felt like this need to write it. He was writing a different book, actually. Um, but he stopped for six weeks. He wrote this, went into the hospital, and went to heaven. And, uh, he, and, and of all things, his last six weeks, he wrote this book called Waging a Winnable War, Overcoming Principles. And so I have these uh, two books. Uh, I'll just put them right here. Two people want to come get them. <laughs> I'm, causing a, I'm causing a fight. Oh, man. Well, I'm going to read a verse. We're going to make a prophetic declaration. And then, I don't like saying this in this room, but I'm going to say it. We're going to see what happens. Because <laughs> any... <laughs> Anything can happen in the worship, Justin. I don't, I don't even know your last name. I don't even know if you know my last name. He came and prayed for me, and that father thing, you know, with my father passing, was, we were best friends. And that heavenly father thing, you were praying over me. Whew, that messed me up in a good way. Anything can happen. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to try. Um, last night we were talking, and I said, I don't really know where to go. But, you know, because usually I'm pretty... Sh but I get here, and I don't know where to go. I mean, I have lots of places we could go. So I, I told Ben and, and Tisha, I said, okay, I have options Ruth, Esther, Daniel. <laughs> we could do Daniel. We voted on Ruth, though. But maybe I'll throw Daniel in Ruth. We'll see how it goes. So I want to get I want to get this part over with the reading of the verse and the prayer and the prophetic declaration, and then the see, get to the see what happens part, okay? I taught Bible college for 16 years. I'm very linear in my thinking, so I love preparation. One thing I've learned, though, is preparation is for the preacher. And then you just let the Holy Spirit flow, amen? But um, let's... Stand, stand with me. Ruth chapter 1, verse 22, reading from the, whatever version this is. <laughs> and make me feel at home. I grew up in Oakland, California, in African-American church, and so I was the white boy almost in everything I was doing, <laughs> school, classrooms, teams, everything. So I'm used to standing for the word, if that's okay. There's a reverence and an awe. If you look in the book of Ezra, when they're reestablishing the word, they stood up and they also lifted up their hands and they said, amen. Can somebody lift up your hands and say, amen. amen. Let's read this. Just one verse. Just one verse. Ready? So Naomi returned. Somebody say returned. returned. Look at somebody beside you and say, Naomi returned. Naomi returned. Returned, returned, returned. Ready? So Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, who returned. Can you look at somebody beside you and tell them return? return. Who returned, ready, from the country of Moab. Now they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. Actually, this place we're staying in Jerusalem is on Raquel's Hill, Rachel's Hill, overlooking the vineyards of David and overlooking Bethlehem. If anyone wants to join us, you're welcome to. <laughs> Let's read that last part. Now they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. Just lift up your hands and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to dive into your word. Speak today for your servants are listening. We open up our ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord would say in Bethesda Church this day. In Jesus' name we pray. And somebody said... 
Before you sit down, get your prophetic bony finger out and put it in your neighbor's face and tell them you are about to experience breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough because what you went through did not break you. Be seated, be seated. You are about to experience breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough because what you went through did not break you. Your short-term temporary pain has caused you to obtain an anointing oil that cannot be explained. It's a whole nother level, and God would even use the devil to give you double for your trouble. Can somebody say, thank God for the struggle? Thank God for the struggle. Oh, okay. I got that over with. So I'm walking through the church last night. We were bringing the, the books and the hats and all that stuff. And we're in this lobby here in this church. Has anyone ever seen this? How long have you had this? Nine, 10, 12 years, 10 years? So I'm walking through the lobby with Ben last night. Just he and I were in the building dropping the stuff. And I look and I said, whoa, I know that painting. I know that painter. I know this person. That's me. On the floor right there. I've been with you all along. I didn't know it. You didn't know it, but I've been here. One of our pastors in the 90s painted this picture. And uh, Pastor Francine and her husband, Dr. Tim, and this is one of 50. And you found this in a closet somewhere. And you obtained it. And you snatched it. And you brought it here. And have you seen this thing? This thing is powerful. I'm just going to put it right here because that's me right there. <laughs> I was tripping. <laughs> I was like, what? We made a video, sent it to my family. I was just with a pastor friend of mine in Dallas, and he has one of the one of 50. He doesn't have one. He has a different number, but he, I was just in his house, and he had this on the wall. And then I walk in here, and you have one of 50. Number one of 50. 50 is Jubilee. This is a, oh gosh, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to Ruth. This is a convergence zone, this church. Um, I was in, in the worship here, and the Lord was <clears throat> speaking to me a, a couple verses. One. Isaiah 54, and it starts to talk about, let me get to it, here it is, enlarge the place of your tent, <clears throat> and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings, do not spare, and here's what you, here's what you went through over the last little season, you've moved into this building, lengthen your cords, there's been a lengthening, but the Spirit of the Lord say, now you have the next part. This is the next part in the season in the life of this church. And strengthen your stakes. You've lengthened. Now God says it's time to strengthen. And there is, and it says, for you shall expand to the right and the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. It goes on and on. It's just a great verse. But I just heard in my spirit the Lord just say, this is a time of strengthening. And God would speak in this house and speak over you all that this is a time of strengthening. This is a time where God is strengthening you in your walk. He's strengthening you in your marriages. He's strengthening you in your families. He's strengthening your children. He's strengthening you in your body. He's, come on, somebody. This is a good place to say amen. He's strengthening you in your careers. There are business people in this room. There are people with ideas, concepts, innovations, inventions. He's strengthening you in this time frame. 
you've gone through the lengthening. How many know what I'm talking about? Lengthening isn't always fun. Stretching isn't always fun. But then now God says, now not only am I going to lengthen you, but I'm going to strengthen you. And God's going to cause even a company of people to rise up in this house with another level of strength they're going to bring to the leadership of this house and to, to the body of this house. They're going to come in here, and they're, it's like God's going to send people in this, to this house that where you're going to reap where you haven't sown. Where, you know, I, I was the chaplain for the Golden State Warriors for many years, <clears throat> and one of the keys to their formula was you have all these young cats who they draft, but then they also bring in the veterans. And you have, your, you have your Jordan Poole, if you know basketball, and your Wiseman and your Kumanga on the team, but you also have your Igadala, who's an old veteran, who's been around the block. He's played a few games, and he has that wisdom on the floor, and he fills in the gaps. And I just believe this is a time where God's strengthening this house, and he's causing people to rise up and take their place in this time. The Lord says in this house that I'm causing even strength to even come financially. I don't know how much is left on the building, on the note on this building, but I see it paid off. I see the Lord blessing the people of this house in such a way where they're just going to begin to pay things, you're going to pay things off. Because there are other things that God wants this house to do to be able to sow and to be able to build and do things in different places. And so the word mortgage, I just see just the divine eraser just saying mortgage is going down to zero and bringing it down. So what does that mean? That means that what Anthony was talking about today, the kingdom, understand the kingdom mindset. God's causing a kingdom mindset to be released on the people of this house. And so I declare blessing over the fruit of your hands, the work of your hands in this house. Let, 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 let the blessing of Joseph's life be upon you where no matter what stage, no matter what season, no matter what station, no matter what place he was in, if he was in the pit, if he was in, in, in slavery in Potiphar's house, if he was in prison or in the palace, no matter what season or stage, there's this saying that everything he put his hand to do, he prospered. And so that follows you everywhere you go and in everything you do. And so we declare prosperity over this house. The other thing I saw was this army thing in this place, that God's raising up an army, the Joel 2 army. Blow a trumpet in Zion. What's the trumpet? It's the prophetic. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. There's an army that's going to march in step together. And, and this is a song, a Solomon-type church, and the, the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance the verse in Song of Solomon, chapter 6, where it says in verse 10, and I love the who questions, by the way, in Song of Solomon. Who is this who is coming up from the wilderness, leaning on her beloved, the leaning worshiper? You go to Hebrews chapter 11 and Jacob at the end of his life is found leaning, worshiping, leaning on his staff. But, but, but it says, in, in 10 it says, who is she? You know who she is. Who looks forth as the morning. What's the morning? It's the patriarchal period in the Old Testament. Fair as the moon, representing the Old Testament. Clear as the sun representing the New Testament. And then watch this. Here's y'all. Ready? Because I'm coming from Texas. Y'all. Awesome as an army with banners. The patriarchs, the OT, the NT, and you and me. Awesome as an army. Come on, somebody. With banners. And his banner over me is love. His name is Jehovah Nissi. He's the Lord, our banner. And we have banners with his name on it. Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shama. Come on, somebody. Jehovah Sidkenu, Jehovah Rapha. He's the healer. He is there. And I'm telling you, there's an army that God's raising up. And I was in this worship here, and this brother was singing 
all these beautiful songs and flowing, and I was just like, I heard a cadence in the atmosphere. Whew. I don't know what this guy's name is, but there's a, there's a prophetic song that's going to be released off you, bro. Where is he? What's his name? Nathan, the gift of God. There's a, there, the, Nathan, there, 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 there's, a, there's a prophetic song that God's going to cause you to begin to sing, and it's going to be a song of deliverance. It's going to be a song of healing. It's going to be a song that's going to break generational curses and what took a thousand hours in therapy in one song God's going to do works in people's lives and their emotions and their memories and so there's a new anointing come upon you Nathan there's a freshness where are you stand up put your hands in the air in fact why don't you run up here because I got to put my hands on you I'm, I'm feeling what the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul um, told the church in Rome, he said, in chapter 1, he said, I long to be with you so I might impart spiritual gifts to you. Where Paul told Timothy, he said, hey, Tim, stir up the gift of God that's inside of you that was given to you through the laying on of my hands. As so you realize that God allows there to be moments in him where there are people that are connected to you, like Justin prayed for me today, where something, when they lay their hands on you, something awakens inside of you, and gifts are stirred, and gifts are given. There it is. How's it going to happen? Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. How's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? Now. There it is. There it is. God says, I hear a supernatural supply that's coming to you personally in this season. I hear Paul's scripture, and my God shall supply. Somebody's going to grab onto this word. All your needs, according to his riches, where? In glory. And so, as my friend William McDowell sings, here comes the glory of the Lord. Let it be released in your life now. There it is. Now just go ahead and take that. There it is. Take it. Take it all. Take it all. Because the prophetic zeal, the prophetic mantle that's on you is being unleashed I hear, I hear the Abba Father saying, you are my psalmist. And so you're singing songs on song lists, but there's going to be spontaneous songs. And there's going to be even new songs that God's going to give you that are going to shoot forth out of this place. There it is. Mm. He trains my hand. Psalm 144. He trains my, my hands for war, my fingers for battle. Whoo. Warfare with a purpose. Mm, 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 mm. Being released through your life. Nathan. The gift. There it is. Just stand there and take it. Just, there's like, you're like you're under a waterfall. I wanted to talk about Ruth. I'm going to get to it. Because God's going to bust something open in this room with Ruth. Why does he do this to me? I go places and I behave. It's like. <laughs> Let me get back up here. Awesome army, yeah, that was it, okay. And then I got over to here. I'm just trying to retrace my steps, sorry. Um, <laughs> it's amazing, you know, I have all these degrees. <laughs> Supposedly working on another one right now. And uh, you get into atmospheres like this if you allow the Holy Spirit. And all that stuff is just preparation. 
for the impartation that God wants to release. Whew. I'm looking for somebody. Is, is your sister? Where is she? Jenny? Can somebody get her if, she, if possible? Otherwise, we'll get her. I saw her up here. Oh, she's not here? Okay, well then just record this. I guess it's recording and streaming too. Her, Je Jenny, right? Jennifer. Um, I saw her up here today and the Lord began to speak to me that that Deborah anointing <clears throat> that's on her life, that gift of wisdom that's upon her, God wants to release that to a whole new company of people. I hear the word limitations being broken off of her. And I see wide and effectual doors opening in this season. I see her as a voice into educational arenas and political arenas, literally influencing influencers, decision makers, politicians, and educators and helping change and craft the system in a whole new way. There's just great wisdom that is upon her. And as she was pouring out upon that young lady that was with her, I just saw that the Lord's going to bless her in this season with increase all around her. Increase literally all around her in every single way. There's a healing anointing that's on her life for emotions and also for people, yeah, people who've been through a lot of pain, but also physical miracles. And even, I heard the Lord say this, tell her that the prayers that she's been praying, even for the one she was sign, doing sign language, I think, with, that God's gonna answer prayers and do creative miracles. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it's gonna be absolutely powerful how God, God moves. What time is it? Oh, boy. At some point, we're going to have to bring the children in here because I, I have a, um, a mandate to lay hands on the next generation before they leave. Okay, Ruth. We read Ruth. I'm going to try and do Ruth for a second. So if I keep looking at you, I won't, I won't talk about Ruth. I'll meet you in the lobby. <laughs> I think last time I was here in the lobby, we were here for about two and a half hours. It was longer than the service. Lobbies are powerful. Ruth chapter one. So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her. And they returned from Moab, to Bethlehem at the beginning, can I prophesy to somebody, of the barley harvest. Now, when you look at the book of Ruth, you realize something, and I just, I actually have all these notes. I'm, I'm writing a book on Ruth, almost done. I don't know when I'll print it or do a digital. Some way it's going to be released. But I call it, the book of Ruth, favor is coming your way. And here's the word of the Lord. Here's the Here's the tagline, but here's the word of the Lord for somebody in this room. Moving from emptiness to fullness. Did you hear that? So you break down the four chapters of Ruth, and it's like this. Favor comes through a choice. Favor comes through a voice. Naomi says, go to the field, which is Boaz's. Favor comes, so rejoice. Go to the threshing floor. Go with Naomi, go to the field, go to the threshing floor. And favor, chapter 4, comes through your loins. Choice, voice, rejoice, and loins. That's the book of Ruth right there. <laughs> it's a powerful book. And when you get into chapter 1, we're moving from, and I want to speak prophetically because I'm speaking prophetically. Everything is a thus saith the Lord right now, okay? You're moving from 
emptiness to fullness. So you start off in verse 1, and there is a famine. And so this guy, Elimelech, takes his wife, Naomi, and they move from Bethlehem, which is the house of bread, to Moab. And Moab is not in Israel. Moab is a house of incest versus a house of bread. And Moab, in, if you look in the original language, is, is, it actually means, it's, not a, it's, it's a question, really, it's a question. Because Ab, Abba, Ab, speaks of father, and Moab, Mo, is who is. So who is your daddy? Now, what's the name of the man who's doing this? His name is Elimelech. What does his name mean? My father is the king. And his wife's his name is Naomi, which means delight or pleasant. And so here you have a man whose name is my father is the king with a wife named Pleasant moving to a land called Who's Your Daddy? Somebody's catching on. You have to be careful in the time of famine, in the time of recession, in the time of inflation to not listen to CNN and MSNBC and voices around you. Somebody's alive up in here now. And make moves that will be detrimental not only to your life, but to your generations. So they moved there with their two sons, Chilion, Chilion, Chil, and Malon. And their names are very interesting because Chilion is a very interesting name because it means pining or wasting away. It actually speaks of finality, his name. It's, it means, who would name their ch child Coming to an end, basically. His name means coming to an end. What's your baby's name? Coming to an end. <laughs> if he gets to the wrong place, everything is going to come to an end. And then Malon means not only sickly, but great infirmity. And so what happens is this. They go to, I want you to understand, we're talking about emptiness to fullness. Watch this. They go to Moab in the time of famine. What is the time of famine? Number one, this is what we're talking about here. We're talking about loss, emptiness. It's a, it's a loss of produce, emptiness, a loss of produce. The land does not yield its fruit. It's a time of lack. It's a time where there's no rain, and so there is no grain. It's a loss of produce. Can somebody say that? A loss of produce. Moving, we're in an empty place. And in that place in Who's Your Daddy Land, my father is king, dies. Chilion dies. Malon dies. And with about one or two verses, all the men are wiped out of the story. And we not only have a loss of produce, now we have a loss of persons. Now I'm talking to somebody. And it's a very difficult time. So Naomi, I'm just telling the story here, because I, I, I love telling stories. I call myself the storyteller who tells stories from within the story. If you're going to tell a story, you've got to get in the story. And here's Naomi, pleasant, who has two daughter-in-laws who had married Chilion and Malon. One was named Orpah, and one was named Ruth. And Orpah and Ruth were Moabitess women. And Orpah, I wrote this down because I didn't remember what it was. Orpah means neck. Or what does a neck speak of? Your will. And her name also means cloud. And Ruth, her name means beautiful. 
So here you have these two daughter-in-laws, one with a stiff neck and one who is beautiful. And in fact, you could even use the word, when you look at, study the word Ruth, her name means beautiful vision. Imagine beautiful vision and stiff neck <laughs> are with pleasant and pleasant says to them, I have to go back to where I came from. I cannot stay in who's your daddy. I got to go back to the house of bread. <laughs> this is real stuff. And so she tells them, and the Bible says they started to weep. And she says, no, 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 you have to stay here. And they began to weep again. But the scripture says, Orpah kissed and Ruth clung. Orpah kissed Naomi. And by the way, this wasn't just, a, this wasn't a romantic kiss. This wasn't even a goodbye kiss. This was a Judas kiss. There are particular, there are different types of kisses in the Bible. And if you study them out, there are certain types of kisses like this one that are kisses that break covenant. And so here, here she is. She's kissing Naomi, pleasant, stiff neck is. And she's kissing her, and she's basically saying, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya, I'm outie, I'm leaving. She left, she kissed. And if you look in the, in the Hebrew Targum, which is, when you, the Targum and the Talmud are, are books, basically, of commentary from Hebrew scholars. And when you look at the, 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 the Targum of Ruth, it tells a story of Orpah, how when she kissed, after she kissed Naomi, she went back to Moab. And I don't want to be too graphic, but can I just tell you what it says? It says that she slept with 100 men. She broke covenant. I want you to hear this. She broke covenant, and all of a sudden, she just was, it opened up something. Like Jesus said, sometimes you cast something out, and you, you start playing with that thing again, it's going to come back to you with seven of its friends. And she went, and she moved from Moab to a town called Gath, and she married a man in Gath. And also Ruth, she clung to Naomi. And you know the story. She went with her to Bethlehem. And she married a man named Boaz. And Boaz and her had a son named Obed. And he had a son named Jesse. And Jesse had a son named David. Well, Orpah went to Gath and married a man. And they had a son who had a son whose name was Goliath. You read, read this. This is in the, the Targum of Ruth. And so all of a sudden, there's a choice that's made. Favor comes to a choice. And so what you find in the Scripture is your choices will end up meeting each other one day down the road in a valley called Elah. Whew, come on, somebody. And Orpah's choice defied the God of Israel and the people of Israel. And even Ruth's son named David. Come on, somebody. And in that field, their choices went to battle. One had swords and spears and javelins, and one had just a, a sling and a stone and took Orpah's choice out. Ruth, I want you to hear this, clung. She said, what you have, Naomi, I have to have. There's something about this, and there's something about you, where all of a sudden, Ruth begins to make a covenant. Entreat me not to leave you 
or turn back from following you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. And your God, my God. Where you die, I die. And there I will be buried. The Lord do so to me and more also if anything but death parts you and me. She said, I'm making a commitment. Something about you is connected to my future. There are certain people, come on somebody, there are certain houses that God connects you to that are connected to your future and you can't take them lightly and try to make choices that are going to cause an alternate destiny to the intention of God for your life. And so what you got to do is you got to cling on. You got to clasp. You got to you got to embrace and take that thing and make a commitment and say where you go I go. Come on somebody. Your God, my God. Your people, my people. Where you lodge, I lodge. Where you die, I die. There is something about you that I got to be connected with because I have a feeling that my destiny is not going to unfold properly unless we are together. And so Ruth makes a commitment. And she said, you are my people. Bye-bye, Moab. Hello, Bethlehem. In a time of emptiness. In a time of emptiness. They start moving their way back to Bethlehem, the house of bread. No more who's your daddy land. No more lack of identity. No more lack. We're going back to the God who has our back. And as they're going, Naomi gets this counterfeit revelation. And she says, change my name. In fact, it says in verse, yes, I need bifocals. She said, they said, is this Naomi? And she said, don't call me pleasant. Call me bitter. For the Lord has dealt bitterly with me. And she said these words, I went out full. And the Lord brought me a home again empty. Loss of produce, loss of persons, now loss of personality. See, one of the things I would feel in this room today, when we're talking about moving from emptiness to fullness, because this, this doesn't sound like a very nice story. Just empty, empty, empty. Loss, loss, loss. When we started off saying breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough because what you went through didn't break you. But this is loss after loss after loss. Come on, somebody. Loss of produce, loss of persons, loss of personality. You see, sometimes you can go through so much and it shakes you to the core I sense the Holy Spirit moving in this room. He shakes you to the core. And you don't even, can't even recognize yourself anymore. Where's that smile? Where's that joy? <sighs> Weeping has endured for a night. <sighs> it's been hard. This has been difficult. There's been loss. There's been disappointment. There's been confusion and depression. I've been, I've been processing this. How can I be covered by the blood of Jesus, have Jesus in my life, be filled with the Holy Spirit and be depressed? Huh. 
It happens sometimes. But guess what? There's a turning of the tide. Something's about to change. Whew. God's restoring something inside of your heart. Weeping endures for a night, but, but joy comes in the morning. So I got an announcement for somebody. It's a new day. I said, it's a new day. And if I go to Jeremiah, when he talks about in Lamentations in chapter 3, he says, his mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. In this new day, there are new mercies. Woo. There's new life. There's new freedom. You're going to dance again. You're going to sing again. You're going to laugh again. You're going to rejoice again. The loss of personality, he's restoring you back. Bitterness is turning into betterness. And God moves you to a place where you can look at all that stuff and you say, I don't like how I got here, but I'm glad I'm here. I don't like how that happened. Come on, somebody. I went through all of that loss, but I have a revelation. Are you ready for it? What has happened had to happen so that what is about to happen can happen. I got to a place where I'm saying, you know what? In order to get to it, I had to go through it. So God comes and he says, I'm restoring your losses I'm restoring the years. I'm restoring what has been eaten and stolen and taken. And the thief that is stolen from you has to return to you back seven times. What has been stolen from you? The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I come to give you life. And life more abundantly, John 10.10. 10. I come to give you life. And life more abundantly. I'm coming to restore something to you. So now you're at the moment of Ruth 1.22. So Pleasant came back. Come on, somebody. Your setback was just a setup for your comeback. Naomi returned. She came back. But she didn't come alone. I want you to understand something. There are spoils whoo, in your battles that God wants to give you in this season. Joseph had, had to take days and days and days to, to, to redeem the spoils. And there's the spoils that Naomi brings. She doesn't come alone. She's coming back with a girl who's going to be engrafted into a line. Through a family called Perez. You read it in Ruth. Through a man named Boaz. Through a son named David. Who eventually in multiple generations will give birth to a son named Jesus. She didn't come back alone. I want you to understand something. She came back with a testimony. She came back with a story in the making. You got to understand where you are right now, you are a story in the making. You are a testimony that is in process right now. And God is bringing you out and he's bringing you in into your promised land. And that's where you got to say amen. amen. <clears throat> because this is your season and this is your time and it's a time of victory. And it's a time of moving from emptiness to fullness. And they return to Bethlehem at the beginning. You got to catch this. You haven't missed out on anything. You have come. You've been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. You haven't missed a thing. You've arrived. Your comeback is just right on time. You've arrived at the beginning of a harvest, of a move. 
that is going to take place where all the servants now are going to be released into the field to gather and to gather and to bring in what has been growing for this time. You see, God wants us to obtain a sense and an understanding and a comprehension of where we've been, where we are, and where this is going. Like C.S. Lewis says, when a preacher wants to sound deep, he quotes C.S. Lewis. <laughs> this moment contains all moments. The past, the present, and the future are here right now. In this house called Bethesda, there's a convergence that is taking place. And I declare as I close, and then we'll see what happens here because we've got to bring the children in because I want to lay hands on them if that's okay. And then I'll sign books for the afternoon and then maybe they'll feed me and I'll fly back to Dallas tomorrow. <laughs> just planning this out here. Is that okay? We're just having a meeting right here. When you move into a place called fullness, there's strength again. Huh. Strengthen after you lengthen. The word strengthen in the Hebrew is kazak, or some people call it, say, even say shazak, which sounds really cool. It's the same word, strengthen in, 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 in Isaiah 54, is the same word that's mentioned in Joshua 1 6, Joshua 1 7, and Joshua 1 9. And he repeats it three times Be strong and of good courage. Kazak or Shazak and Amatz. Be strong and of good courage. And the three instances are this, and I'll close with this, I think. And I'll speak this over this house and over your lives. Be strong. Somebody say strong. strong. There are three types in verse 6. It's about dividing inheritances. There's an anointing in this house to divide inheritances that comes upon Joshua. It's Kazak, it's strength. There's a strength to divide the hair. It says, verse 7 is a word of demonstration and action. Observe to do. It's, it's about inheritance and observance. And then verse 9, which is really powerful, and this is Bethesda right here, is about presence. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed. <laughs> but everywhere you go, presence everywhere you go in the highways the byways can I prophesy to somebody in your job and in your career with your family everywhere you go somebody say presence <laughs> lift up your hands it's Gandalf in the two towers Arriving when the battle is getting tough, he shows up and he says, I have come to you at the turning of the tide. There's a turning of the tide now. Whew. There's a shifting taking place. I don't care what's going on out there in the world right now. God's making a people who are recession-proof. Inflation-proof. You read Jeremiah 17, Blessed is the man who puts his trust in the Lord. His leaf will remain green even when the heat comes. I'm telling you right now, your leaf, somebody's going to catch this, as you trust in the Lord, is going to remain green. I declare you're going to be inflation-proof, recession-proof. You're going to be blessed when in the city and blessed in the field and blessed when you come and blessed when you go and blessed shall be the fruit of your hands. You will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You're going to see God move on your behalf. I declare it in your life right now. As the Holy Spirit, we thank you.
Mm. Abba Father, we say thank you. Yeah. Jesus, we say thank you. (laughs) We thank you that you emptied yourself out so that we may be full. If there's anyone in this room right now, you're in one of two places. One, you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Or two, you know that it's time for you to make a fresh commitment. I want to pray with you right now. Just be seated real quickly, and I'm going to pray for the kids. One of those two places, never received Jesus or online as well, or need to make a fresh commitment. Just raise your hand in this room. I want to pray. Anyone? Fresh commitment. You feel that? Everyone's good? Anyone? God bless you. Yeah, don't be shy. God bless you. Anyone else? I always want to give opportunity, anyone, and online too. All right, well, those of you who raise your hand, anybody else, everyone just say this prayer with me and say, Dear Lord Jesus, today I confess that you are God, and I confess my sins before you. I repent. I stop from going my way, and I turn and I go your way. Lord Jesus, today, I invite you into my life to be my Savior, to be my God, and my best friend forever. In your name I pray, amen. Somebody heard that best friend part, like, I'm getting in on this too, amen? All right, so if we can line all the kids up, and I think this is a fire tunnel type of church, so if I can get fire tunnel team people to come help me, leaders, come, please help me. And let's make a fire tunnel. We're going to anoint these kids. And let me tell you about the kids of this house. This is a prophetic generation. This is a Samuel generation. This is a bridge generation, be bridging eras now. And so the hand of the Lord is going to come upon them, and dreams are going to be released in their lives. Prophetic words and miracles and signs and wonders are going to be released through the children of this house. And so if you could line the kids up this way, and we're just going to bring them this way, and we're going to anoint the children. Could we have something musical? Is it possible to play something musical?